Hi folks, this is all the fruit. I'm in Heidelberg, Germany. And today I want to find out, is it really true that some fruit, like yeah, medlars, rose hips, and most prominently blackthorn fruit, really do need frost to be sweet and palatable and basically edible? <clears throat> well, actually I already know the answer to the question. But, the last three nights we had frost, the first frost of the year. Not very harsh frost, as you can see here. Even in this quite unprotected area, the herbs didn't freeze. So, yeah, first about three nights, two or three nights of frost. Not very harsh frost. But here is a shrub hanging full of blackthorn fruit. This is most probably not a, well, this is definitely not a natural population of blackthorn, but this is a hedge that was planted decades ago. Now most of the plants that grow here are not part of the original hedge. The Armenian bramble, the maple trees of different species, they are definitely not part of the original hedge, probably even the, probably even the elderberries. However, the uh, the Puracanta or fire thorn is definitely part of the original hedge and I'm pretty sure that the Ligustor and the Blackthorn. So this is not a native population of Blackthorn. Does it make a big difference for the fruit? This particular shrub has lost almost all its leaves, but it's hanging full of fruit. Okay, oh, I didn't think this through. I was able to pick a lot of fruit before, but now I have the phone in one hand. Hmm. Okay. Okay, got a couple blackthorn fruit. Well, blackthorn is a species you can harvest pretty long during autumn. Actually, yeah, November, now we have the first days of November. November is the best time for harvesting it, but you can harvest it well into December and sometimes January, February, in rare occasions, even March. Despite the fact that we are quite early, you can see that a lot of the fruit are not edible anymore. This one was attacked by some bird, but this one rotted quite early. Most fruit are still good, but here and there are a couple which are not good anymore. This is important. Uh, keep this in mind. Well, we're going to discard the bad fruit and stick to the good ones. Pretty decent size for blackthorn. A little bit of muck and algae on them. Well, cannot be helped. Hmm. Quite soft. So, yeah, we had frost, they are soft. Hmm. Sour, with a nice blackthorn flavor, but also some astringency. Despite the frost. So, we had some light frost, and the fruit are kind of edible-ish. Well, this would... This would suggest that, yeah, you need frost to make the fruit edible. After a couple stronger frosts, the astringency will disappear and the fruit will become even tastier. But even right now you can use them for stuff like jams, jellies, I use them a lot for liquor. But do those black thorn fruit really need frost? Do rose hips really need frost? Do meddlers really need frost to become edible? Well, the answer is no, because I've tried them out, all of them basically. During my more recent videos, I mentioned probably a hundred times that we have had some drought stress here in the last three years. Well, it doesn't look like a desert around here. Even in November, it's still nice and green. But those shrubs and trees used to 
even wetter conditions, they experience drought stress. And even when the shrubs and trees themselves survive, first things to suffer are the fruit. Well, usually the uh, quantity and quality of fruit decreases through those years of drought stress, but a lot of them can be eaten earlier. Why? Throughout the summer, even since September, when it was pretty warm here, you could eat rose hips. They were already nice and ripe, which usually happens only after the frost. The German meddlers, they did not get ripe early, but they got ripe in the last weeks of October, even without frost. So they got ripe, not like the rose hips, months earlier than normally. They got ripe at the normal time, even without frost. And, yep, this adds up because the medlars are sometimes grown in subtropical areas, and I've seen them on the Costa Tropical in southern Spain, growing between mangoes, bananas, papayas, avocados, chirimoyas, and those medlars were perfectly ripe in December, despite the fact that they experienced no frost. And also, during the last two years, the black thorn fruit, I tried them a couple times in late summer, and they were like this, soft, a little bit sweet, and not too astringent. So what happens oh, when those fruit experience frost? Why do they get edible after frost? Well. The frost basically breaks open the cells, release the juices, and mm, some chemical processes, which I probably learned at university a couple of decades ago, but forgot meanwhile, transform the sour and astringent acids and release sweet sugars. Well, so the frost does not produce the sweetness it does not destroy the uh, the tartness or the astringency but basically because it breaks open the walls of the cells all the juices got mixed up and some processes happen inside those fruits and yeah that's the secret of all the stuff if you have some other processes which would break open the cells of the fruit you would get the same result as with frost for example, when it's very dry and the fruit ripened very early, like with the rose hips and the black thorn, they will become edible even before the first frost. Or if the fruit become ripe and then stay on the tree for many weeks or probably months after they were ripe, like the medlars in subtropical Spain, the cells will also break open and the fruit will get ripe and edible. And so, maybe I should have done two videos. One before the first frost and one now, and compare the taste of the fruit. But yeah, basically, the taste of those plectorn fruit right now in this day, you can explain in, in two ways. We had mild frost. That's why they are kind of edible already, and after strong frost they will become more edible. Or you can explain it, yep, yeah, even before the frost, a couple weeks before the frost, they were edible because I tried them. And yep, yeah, if we get strong frost, they will get more edible in a couple weeks. But even if we don't get strong frost, they will get more edible because the process of destruction of the cells and releasing of the juices and releasing of the sugars has already started. It will continue even without frost. Hmm. Mm. Okay. This fruit was a little bit moldy. Of course, once the walls of the cells break open and the juices are released, as soon as the fruit gets the smallest puncture or wood, fungi and bacteria will get in and it will not stay good forever. Hmm. The last one was good again. So folks, those were some thoughts on whether stuff like black thorn medlar and raw sips to need frost to become edible. Answer, no, but it helps. 
Well, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Heidelberg. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.